All right, the great search is brought to you by DigiKey. Thank you, DigiKey. And Adafruit Lady to use her skills of an engineer to navigate the DigiKey site to find the things that you're looking for. More so than ever, that's the most important thing because planet Earth ran out of parts. I know. We have, um, a, we have a lot of sand, but we don't have any, uh, yeah. any silicon. So uh, what's the great search this week? Okay, this week's great search. So one of the nice things about the great search is what I do is during the week, when I'm struggling with finding a part, because every week there's a part that I can't get, and uh, you know, me and the purchasing team, we, we use our wits um, to uh, find alternative parts, which is, which is an engineering skill. Um, you know, specking the parts one thing, but then being able to find alternative spec parts is important also. It's really easy to get the exact same component every time, but eventually that component is not available, and that's happening a lot. So let's talk today about one of the most jelly bean components we use, which is the BSS 138 can you, Dual. Can you say what jelly bean is for the oh. folks who aren't uh, in this industry? Jelly, jelly bean, I don't know where this came from. I, I picked it up from someone, but jelly bean means it's a part that's so common that it's made by multiple places, like a 7805 linear regulator, right? Very, very common, made by multiple companies, it's well specced. It's not a unique part. Like I was showing off the IS uh, thirty one FL three seven forty one. That's a very specific chip. So if anyone knows why it's called Jelly Bean, put in the chat because this week coming up, Lavar Burton's hoping, hosting Jeopardy, and I know this is going to be a question. Oh, it's totally been a question. Now, Electronic component history. Yeah, but if you know why it's called Jelly Bean or the origins of it, uh, no googling allowed because I can yeah, Google yeah. later. But yeah. um, that I've heard this too. Yeah. And I've I heard Bunny say it to me like. I don't know. I think I picked it up from Bunny. I, I heard it from name. Bunny like 15 years ago. Yeah. So I have a feeling this is an older industry term. But anyways, yeah, like it'll probably be the final Jeopardy or question. jelly beans. Basically, it's the, the things that you sprinkle that are not, you know, there's, no, look, no. there's the Wi-Fi chip, the Bluetooth chip, the espresso chip. This is like, you know, there's only one place to get it. And then there's, there's jelly beans. Okay, so the jelly bean part we're talking about today is the dual BSS-138 uh, N-channel MOSFET. So this part, as shown here, we use tens and tens of thousands, like 100,000 a year easily, because they go onto every one of our breakout as level shifters. We use them to level shift I squared C, um, you know, pull-ups on either side. Why do we do level shifting I squared C? Because um, when we sell sensors, a lot of sensors, like 99.9999% of sensors and devices are 3.3 volt logic and power. Although, you know, we do have a couple 1.8 volt ones as well. Um, which is important. We'll actually chat about that. And I want to make sure that people can plug in their boards into an Arduino Uno or a Mega or a Zero or, you know, an ESP32. You don't know if it's going to be 5 volt or 3 volt on the other side. And we want to shift the I squared C logic and nothing beats the simplicity and price of this. Two and channel fits, four pull-up resistors, and you're golden. In fact, this is um, NXP in their kind of famous... I squared C level shifting techniques in bus designs is like a, a tome, uh, a famous work. You know, they show this off and they, they talk about it. Um, and then the shows, you know, this is this is basically what's going on. You have I squared C on either side and uh, this does a great job. And uh, this is a rock, rock, rock solid design. I mean, right. I've used this hundreds of times. I thousands. have some breaking news. Oh, wait, what? Jelly bean dates from the early days of Intel and Fairchild Semiconductor referring to common chips. Um, Gordon Moore may have coined the term yeah. uh, jelly beans. You know, if it's not true, you've uh, you've totally tricked me. Um, well, if we're going to start misinformation, let's just start with this. That. Is a better, this is way better than most, <laughs> right? <coughs> let's okay, do this. so so the, the you know I, I the BSS 138 I've really liked it and I've used it before. It's kind of famous; people use it a lot, and I like the dual um, fit because you know you need two. So why not just have it in two? So this is the, the hold on, this is the piece. It's a SOT 363. It's small. It's easy to pick in place. It's, you can hand solder it. It's, it does the job. It's great. Except when you cannot get any. So I was on uh, DigiKey earlier this week because we you know we're like okay we need more bss 138 duels and so i'll just show you know when you go to uh you know they have some exact matches but we want the array because we want the dual 
And then if you look, zero, 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 all out of stock. And and like, I have never seen this in my life. There's always like a million of these in stock. Because uh, again, they're so jelly and they're used everywhere. Um, time to freak out and give up? No, time to use our great searching power to find an alternative. And note that this is a jelly bean, B, the BSS, you see it's made by MCC and diodes and next period. This is a one situation where not only is the, I tend to buy the next period part, but all of the alternative sources for the jelly bean are also out, right? So it's not like, oh, just find it from another maker. We actually have to find something that has a different part number, but the same functionality. So let's, um, you know, I like to use the um, product attributes as a way to uh, pick out which ones to get. So let's go with active, dual, and channel. Um, I'm not gonna necessarily pick the logic level gate. The drain to source voltage actually, it's 60. You don't need that much, right? Obviously we're not dealing with more than a couple volts. Um, I don't want to be specific about the RDS on or the current drain because again, it's, it's a little flexible with that. But I am really picky that I want it to be surface mount and I want it to be a SOT 363 because that I needed to be drop-in replacement. Um, so let's view similar. And we got about 118 options. Since I really need to, you know, I need to have this in stock, I'm just gonna pick in stock immediately to, to pare down the options. So the next question is like, what of all of these things are important? Well, RDS on is something that you care about when you're dealing with like a power transistor, when you have a lot of current passing through because the RDS on, determines the voltage drop across the uh, the drain and source. In this case, it's logic level shifting. So I don't, you know, I wish I could actually hide, you know, this and say like, I don't even want to look at this option. I don't care about that. Also current, there's almost no current passing through here. This is a logic level. This is, you know, milliamp maybe when the, it gets pulled down, almost nothing. Um, so, you know, power max, the temperature, a lot of these things are actually not important, but there is one thing that is important, which is the VGS. Why? Because when you look at here, this voltage, especially for the low voltage, you used to be able to turn this on and off based on the lowest voltage that you will encounter on the bus. So if you're doing three volt to five volt, you just have to make sure that the VGS is, you know, greater than three volts because you just want to make sure to be able to turn it on and off. I like to have it a little, a little bit lower than just on the edge, even though it's the max, in case your, you know, your power supply droops and it's not exactly 3.3 and it's three. So you want it to have a little bit lower, so maybe 2.6 volts. However, we use these transistors also to logic level shift 1.8 volts, like the SGP30 gas sensor and a couple other sensors we use. Our 1.8 volt, we have 2.6 volt logic. There's a couple, not a lot, but enough that I want to make sure that I don't mess things up for them. Because believe me, I have accidentally placed a 2N7002 uh, dual FET and it did not work on low voltage um, level shift. I think it was a 7002. I don't remember the exact part number, but basically it didn't have a low enough VGS. It, the turn on voltage was too high. It didn't turn on and off. So what you want to do is make sure it doesn't, you know, the, the BSS 138, let me go back to DigiKey. One moment, let me uh, look up the part number. Detail. Yeah, we get to the point when we show stuff on Desk of Lady Ada, we make sure we purchase it before we talk about it. Yeah, I already bought, I bought yeah. you'll see like, how, 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 why are you showing this stuff? There's only 5,000 stock. Yeah, because I already bought like 50,000. We, we, learned, we learned our lesson. I learned my lesson. Mistakes were made, lessons were lessons learned. Lessons were learned. That's it's, a, it's a new segment, so we're not doing it this week because it's, unboxing. it's Ada Box. But um, the new segment is called Mistakes Were Made, Lessons Are Learned. So this will help all of you out there thinking you need to be perfect. You don't. Just be honest. Okay. So this, this what I liked about the BSS 138 is it has this VGS you see here, 1.6 volts. You don't have to be exactly 1.6, but you want it, you want it less than 1.8 um, and a little bit less than 1.8. And you'll notice that actually there's nothing here that's exactly 1.6. That's why you don't want to be, I didn't click that off because it's like, it just can't be larger than 1.6. So let's, um, let's select everything less than that. And, you know, I don't really care about the VDS or anything here. And nothing else here is that important. 
to be honest. Um, and then when you go down here, we actually have a couple options. Again, you know, the, these are all in stock. Um, you'll note that none of them have hundreds of thousands in stock because I, I kind of purchased a bunch of them. But they all have the same package. And here's the good news. All these have the same pinout. The dual FET pinout is a standard pinout. Like they, they are symmetric and equivalent. So yes, I'll check the data sheet, but you can, in this case, just trust me, I already looked it up. Um, so what I did was, you know, I only really care about price in this case because I know the specifications are that important. Um, and so I actually found um, the alternative, which was an NX138, which is actually, I, I like the look of that, right? BSS138 and this is the NX138. So it's kind of, a, I have a good feeling about it. It matches the specs, but I also like it when they reuse the part numbers. It's a little bit of a, a hint kind of telling you like this is going to be uh, similar as a drop-in replacement. So um, this is the part. So this is, you know, there's, there's still some in stock. I didn't buy them all, did buy a couple uh, so that we can keep making our breakouts because it's, it's, you know, I need, I really need to have a dual fat. Every single one of our breakouts, every one of our stomach QT boards. Right. So, so they do have a question about, and since there are pull-up resistrons on the board, I assume I don't need to add them. You don't. We put very weak pull-ups, um, 10K which is good for, you know, 100 kilohertz I squared C. If you want to run one megahertz, I would recommend adding another one. But 10K is a nice balance of, you're not going to hang your I squared C bus. It'll run at 100 kilohertz or 400 kilohertz, which is like kind of, you know, what most default buses run at. But also if you put multiple of them in parallel, um, you know, because you, you plug in I squared C, multiple QT boards, you can plug, you know, up to five of them, and then you'll still only have a 2K pull up. You know, it, uh -huh. it, that's what it'll look like to the host, which is the standard pull-up size. So what I like is you can put like five to 10 and the host will get overburdened by the pull-up. So I like 10K. I'm like a 10K kind of girl. All right. Someone has, I think this might be a future yeah. great search um, or it's a general question. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. It says, how to choose piezo piezoelectric actuators for replacement parts for in-body image stabilized cameras? Oh, goodness. Those are going to be really custom. Yeah. Um, I really think what you should do is, is try to, I would actually go on eBay, to be honest, and see if you can find yeah, people selling. Yeah, there's also Wilkin. camera repair. I think that's in the camera repair category where it, it's, it's like. A different, it's a different thing, but you want to find people who are throwing away cameras with like broken lenses or broken main boards, and then you can maybe recycle the, the piezo actuator, yeah. but like, oh uh, yeah, that's going to be I feel be like really, there's an industry around this that I don't know about. It's a, it's custom. I think piezo is super custom. All right. All right, so that's the great search. Thanks, everybody.